welcome to the launch of the fourth district progressives united candidate for those of you that are just joining us um honorable to be vincent scatliff he is the doc he is the man that has the diagnosis and he also has the remedy for this district yes yes Welcome to all of you that are listening to us on 780 AM. And to those of you that would, are not um, here, you can join us on the Progressives United um, page on Facebook. So you can just feel the energy, feel the vibe, feel the rhythm, and feel the vibe. Dr. Scatliff is a Virgin, Virgin Islander who was born in Scatliff Alley right across their road town. He is the son of the late Anesta Francis and Luther Scatliff of Rotel. He is married to Mrs. Burnett Matavia Scatliff of Pleasant Valley, and together they have two sons, Vinbert and Lucas Scatliff. <laughs> Dr. Scatliff began his primary education at the Rotel Primary School. You went a long time, Doc. That school name changed a long time. He is a graduate of the then BVI High School, presently renamed the Elmore Stout High School. He is a graduate of the University of the West Indies and Howard University, USA. Mm -hmm. Big deal. His internship in medicine includes the following. UE, Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados, and Dominique. Man, wait, 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 wait. His internship in medicine includes the following. The University of the West Indies, not just in Jamaica, but in Trinidad, Barbados, and Dominica. Do y'all see who I have getting ready to represent you? Jesus. Yeah. In the USA, he ain't stopped there, no. In the USA, Howard University Hospital, George Washington Hospital, St. Elizabeth Psychiatric Hospital, and in St. Thomas at the Roy Snyder Hospital. Yeah. Woo -woo! Woo! I'm in great company here. Lord, I must see he ain't done. He went on to the UK. Nasbury Psychiatric Hospital. Barnet General and Middlesex General Hospitals. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a real doctor in the house. On returning home, he worked in the mental health division, emergency room, and lastly, in community health. Until his retirement. Until his retirement. Doctor retired? I don't think so. You're just getting ready to work. He has been practicing medicine for over 30 years and presently operates a private-owned practice at the BNF Medical Complex. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Listening audience on 780 and those of you viewing on Facebook, stand wherever you are as we welcome none other than the doc himself. We are getting ready to bring him home, your Progressives United candidate for the 4th Electoral District, Mr. Dr. Vincent V. In this country, hey, he's a man with a vision, he's a man on a mission, true representation. I don't believe in corruption, no. Vince is Catholic, he's a guy, better be the eye, the answer right in front of our eyes, hey. Wow. Thank you, Stephanie. That was an introduction. Good evening, voters, residents, and friends of the 4th District and Greater Virgin Islands. Tonight, I consider it a privilege to come to you to offer myself as your candidate 
for the 4th District at this very critical path of our territory. A time when, unlike any other, it is extremely crucial that we elect men and women who first and foremost understand and subscribe to the principle that Virgin Islanders must be given priority in any social and economic development opportunities which may arise in this country and as such must be empowered and protected. However, education must form the base for this empowerment and protection. It is almost insane for nationals of a country to feel marginalized, disenfranchised, and abandoned. Any social theorist would tell you that this is a recipe for disaster. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we must elect men and women who understand and subscribe to the following. Leadership matters. The book of Proverbs 29.18 tells us that where there is no vision, the people perish. To this end, we must elect men and women who understand that leadership matters and who will ensure sustainable leadership by adhering to the following principles. Accountability, transparency, responsibility, integrity without corruption, nepotism, and cronyism. Ensuring that there is a square peg in a square hole versus square peg in a wrong hole. That is ensuring there's the right man for the job. Ladies and gentlemen, anyone who subscribes to this, that leadership matters, must understand that Virgin Islanders must be first and in charge of their destiny and development. We must elect men and women who understand that preservation of our heritage, culture, and legacy of our ancestors is a must. It is well known and accepted that a people without a heritage, culture, and legacy is like a tree without roots. Ladies and gentlemen, we must elect men and women who understand the principle of good governance. The men and women who we elect must demonstrate respect and adherence to constitutional advancement, must demonstrate political maturity and integrity, must demonstrate respect for the rule of law, peace and order. We mu they must embrace our sovereignty and nationality for what is worth and valued. They must stop fighting with the governor and the United Kingdom, but instead seek to negotiate in a reasonable and respectful, respectful atmosphere. We must say no to independence. We must say no to China. We must say no to Russia. These are not economic alternatives of choice. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at economic security and sustainability. Financial services. These men and women who elect, ladies and gentlemen, must ensure financial stability, must ensure his softness, relevance, and ensure that it's well regulated. They must promote and regulate micro and macro business development. They must review and regulate banking services in order to promote sustainable development. They must maintain and protect our currency. They must maintain and protect our currency. Presently, we have the best of three worlds. We spread the US currency. We fly the Union Jack. And each Virgin Islander has five representatives. Where else in the world do you enjoy such privileges and opportunity? Ladies and gentlemen, that is what the Virgin Islands is all about. And this is what we shall protect. Ladies and gentlemen, the men and women who you send to the next House of Assembly must maintain and protect our trade relationship. They must review and regulate the operation and services of insurance company. We know all about that. They must implement consumer protection. Only talk, but we will do it. Ladies and gentlemen, looking at tourism diversification, we must do it in the areas of health, sports, performing arts, and so on. Develop agriculture as a third economic pillar, ladies and gentlemen. We have a two-hour sea limit, ladies and gentlemen, which is filled with natural resource, fishing. Ladies and gentlemen, we must develop our agriculture capacity, fishing, horticulture, and resources, and their capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, I turn my attention to health and security, health security and sustainability. Establish and promote resilient healthcare facilities and services. They must improve secondary healthcare facilities, services, and to ensure proper management of complex medical situation. Progressive United will do that. They must establish and improve tertiary healthcare rehabilitation facilities and resources 
to ensure the proper management and rehabilitation of situation beyond our capacity. Progressive United will accomplish that. Ensure the availability and accessibility to these facilities and ensure the security and sustainability of our social security and NHI. I will pause here to elaborate a little bit about the NHI system. The NHI system is not a bad system. It was a good system. I thank the minister who came up with the idea. Because what I found as a member of the health team for many years is that we were providing a service for which we were not collecting the revenue. We were providing a service of quality using very high tech and sophisticated products for which we were not collecting the revenue. Persons were coming from all over, ladies and gentlemen, and they were utilizing and accessing all healthcare services for which we wasn't collecting one cent. I can give you one clear example that stands with me, an experience that I had when I was in the emergency room. This individual arrived at the emergency room and requested assistance. I was the officer on duty. I proceeded to attend to this person. In that space of half an hour, that person clocked up about $10,000 worth of health care and left without paying a cent at the hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, that is vexing to my spirit and my heart. And I call the minister. I say, Minister, you can't believe what just happened. Ladies and gentlemen, when I checked where the lady came in, she had just arrived in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, her luggage was still in the vehicle and the car was still warm. Ladies and gentlemen, I said, Minister, you would not believe this. And hence, the evolution of NHI is a very good thing. I would expand on that a little bit more. The goose that lays the golden egg cannot write a check to write off the bill for healthcare services anymore. We know the challenges that financial services are facing. Ladies and gentlemen, financial services are on the decline. We cannot depend on financial services to write off the bill for healthcare services, like was education and other such services. We have to look for new revenue streams. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you that one example, and the others are just as bad. All right? So under a progressive united government, ladies and gentlemen, we will ensure that such practices and habits are no longer happening and that NHI will fund the healthcare costs of these individual ladies and others. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I turn my attention to education, development, and sustainability. We must develop and implement curriculums at all levels of education, which are culture-based oriented and are relevant to our history, geography, economy, politics, society in its development. A critical and essential component or element of the curriculum shall include the learning and facilitation process at the relevant stages of education. Example, when a child goes into primary school, at that stage it should be it should be encouraged as how to learn. All right, I've, speak, I've spoken to many educators that didn't wasn't aware of that. They must be taught how to learn, and children learn differently. So what you are doing at the primary level is encourage them and give them the modus operandi as to how to learn. So by time they reach the secondary level of education, what you are doing is not teaching them how to learn anymore because that foundation has been completed. You are now teaching them and facilitating the learning process. As a result of this facilitation, of this fa of, as a result of this facilitation at the secondary level, the whole educational cost can be significantly reduced because you don't need all those teachers. You understand? We have all kind of smart board and other technological devices that can be used to facilitate the learning process. So, we are here wasting time, all these teachers paying all this money, when we have a process and it's instituted, can actually give us a better product at a lower cost. Now, the family security and its sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take my time with this one. I want you to hear this one because this is a critical issue facing our society right now. The family is the functional unit of any society. The family is the primary institution for the socialization, assimilation, and inculturation of new members 
in finding their purpose and occupying their rightful position in society. Are you hearing me? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, are you hearing me? Yes. The forces that negatively impact the family in negating its vital role and function must be minimized and eliminated. The family must provide for its members safe housing, shelter, clean air and water, proper nutrition, suitable clothing, good health, and safety, and the list goes on. That is the role function of the family. And there are certain forces that impact on the family that makes it negate its responsibilities. Ladies and gentlemen, under a progressive united government, ladies and gentlemen, we will ensure that the family has all the resources it needs to carry this vital role, and hence prepare its new members for the rightful place and purpose in the society. Ladies and gentlemen, we must look at the family support services. And these include things like the Red Cross, Family Support Network, Rotary, Lions, the churches, other governmental and social networks. These must be encouraged and regulated. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, the family can't do it alone. So they need the support services. Under Progressive United Party, we will ensure that these services are well empowered, well equipped, and well regulated to support the family in carrying out that vital role. Ladies and gentlemen, I turn my attention to national security. We must ensure the sustainability of our national security in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is right that all the security agencies, national security agencies, such as police, customs, immigration, labor, the judiciary, the courts, prison, shall come under one body. By what, what a name we choose to call it. Presently, we have a constitutional body referred to as a national security body that is functioning. Probably we can put all of them under there, or we can call it by some other name. I now turn my attention to the environment and its sustainability. Now, the environment is very important to us because we all have an interconnection, an interrelationship with the environment. Without the environment, we are dead. So we must protect the environment and ensure, ensure its security and sustainability. We must look at clean water, clean air, electricity, reliable source of electricity, proper communication, look at the information technology, sewage ladies and, sewage ladies and gentlemen, which we still have running in road town. We have to look at the road network. Right now they're getting a little cosmetic job. I don't know what that means. That's some kind of political gimmick. We have to look at the guts. We have to look at the drains, the ponds, the beaches, coastal erosion, solid waste, garbage disposal, environmental health, food security and sustainability, or airports or seaports. Ladies and gentlemen, these environmental factors are very important to a sustainable environment. Under a progressive united government, ladies and gentlemen, we will ensure the security and sustainability of the environment. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the calamity of weather recently experienced has exposed many deficiencies and weaknesses in leadership and good governance, thus providing an opportunity for self-examination and renewed growth and development. The foundation of this country, ladies and gentlemen, was based on Christian principles, and the spirit of our ancestors must be aggrieved by the way we have strayed and lost away in recognition and appreciation of the sacrifices they made in order to provide us with this valuable inheritance of these beautiful Virgin Islands. Our history of the agricultural economy, ill-fated fanchine, prohibition period, together with their sweat, blood, tears, lynching, hard work, resilient and determined spirit, and such like, must be celebrated and not be forgotten, as some will want us to. These attributes and sacrifices by our ancestors built the foundation for a social and economic success and therefore we can share with others which is deserving of respect and gratitude. Ladies and gentlemen, do you hear me? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in 2007 I ventured on a mission with a clear vision to improve the infrastructure, aesthetics and social development issues affecting our beloved district. A clear and specific blueprint was designed, was designed to address most of the vexing problems in this district, as I will now outline. Flooding. On taking office, 
I immediately researched and mapped out over the 100 tributaries, tributaries, drains, and guts in the district. A maintenance plan was developed and implemented to clean, repair, and maintain these drains on a quarterly basis. Cell, trap, cell traps were constructed in the main Lower Diamond Joe's Hill Lower Estate to Wickham Ski Gut in order to reduce the flooding impact on the residents and businesses in the community. A plan was envisioned to raise the bridge located between the fire station and Franklin Building to, and to create an, an additional road access to Walter Francis Drive. Ladies and gentlemen, the Progressive United Government will continue this plan and will have it implemented. Architectural and engineering design were completed for the trading of the, McNamara, of the McNamara gut. Ladies and gentlemen, this project will be executed under a Progressive United administration. Trading of the Lower Diamond gut, which separates the 4th and the 5th district, was started and will be continued, thus providing additional space for light commercial activities. Ladies and gentlemen, that gut takes up a lot of space because whenever it comes down, it erodes the side of the gut. If we train it and take up some additional space, we can create very much light industries across that corridor there, ladies and gentlemen, for young men and women who are so desired and motivated. The roads. The man's road was open to reduce congestion and provide additional access out to the, and to provide additional access out of the district via the Paul Watley Drive. The present design and subsequent construction are not what was originally intended by us. Political expediency by the incumbent resulted in what you see presently. The McNamara Road to Bong Tree was completed. Pavement of the Lower Diamond Road was completed. Acquisition of land for the widening of the Sugar Mill Road to facilitate parking was initiated and successfully completed. Work will now be undertaken for full utilization. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a vision of mine, Sugar Mill Road, because I realized the, the Turnbulls and other persons along that Sugar Mill Road were having some difficulty because they were parking on the one side of the road and they turned up to lane into a one lane. And I envisioned that there was extra, extra space on the opposite side by a landowner. And I approached that lawn or landowner and I said to him, look, I need so many feet of that land to sort of provide parking for these folks along there. And he said to me, go to Public Works, the plans are there, tell them exactly how much you want and close the deal. Ladies and gentlemen, that was done. I was not able to execute it because they voted me out of office. But ladies and gentlemen, as you see, it's there. That was my idea. And I worked on that. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm taking office come February 25th. I will complete that project. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I will just now go on to lighting in the district. As you can see, the district is very dark. Or Maria has made it a little worse. But a plan was deduced under my administration to address and improve the lighting and the safety and security in the district. The parking lot across from Bobby's and adjacent to Village Key, the bandstand, Colorado parking lot, among other areas, receive street lights. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we have none. But on taking office on February 25th, February 25th, ladies and gentlemen, this plan will be rehabilitated. <coughs> That's a promise. Recreational facilities. Resurfacing of the lower estate and Longbush basketball court was completed. Establishment and the installation of a playground in Longbush was completed and will be replaced as it was destroyed by the 2017 weather challenges. Improvement to the sanitary and structures facilities at the softball field were completed. However, going forward, the opportunity is now right to develop and construct a proper national softball stadium. The field can be expanded in a northeasterly direction before the development of the Elmer Stout High School takes place. The name of Honorable Walwyn Brule is synonymous with softball, and he has been inducted into the Softball Hall of Fame. Now, not many people know this, 
but this should be celebrated. Yeah. Furthermore, this national stadium, as envisioned by the Progressive United, will this furthermore, this national stadium and the basketball court located right here can be incorporated into one sport complex allowing for playing of games in all weather conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, this a promise and this will be done under Progressive United. Refurbishing of the shed at the Sunday morning well was completed and will be renovated, restored, and maintained. Refurbishing and renovation of the bandstand was completed under my administration. This area will be renovated, restored, and maintained. As you can see, it has no hair. Procurement of land together with architectural and engineering design for a much needed community center in the district at Fishlock Road was initiated and will be constructed. Sewage. Ladies and gentlemen, research and subsequent contracting of a firm to improve the sewage infrastructure in the city was implemented and will be revisited. Ladies and gentlemen, when I took office in 2007, there was sewage running in the street. I campaigned on sewage. Ladies and gentlemen, to this day, we still have sewage running in the street. My good friend here, Honorable Julian Fraser, was given a task to research a company. We called it by water. We had a dual deal, water and sewage. They were going to fix both for us. We had a plan. We had a plan. When the NDP took over, they frustrated that plan, and they sold the plan. And still, we have sewage running in the streets and no water. Who they sold it to? Who they sold it to? Themselves, they said? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, but on taking office, we will revisit this whole water and sewage dilemma in the district, and we will come up with another plan. Solid waste. A plan was devised and implemented to ensure regular collection and proper disposal of garbage in the district, thus reducing the rodent population and improving the health and aesthetics of the district. This will require further improvement going forward. Sanitary facilities. No Lloyd Park, no Lloyd Positive Action Park. I broke in a public private partnership for the construction of the restroom facilities there. They were destroyed to somewhat by Or Maria. They have sent me refurbished and repair. And going forward, ladies and gentlemen, that whole area, ladies and gentlemen, will be refurbished, will be repaired, and properly maintained. The Sunday morning well. I envision a toilet facility to be constructed there. And this will be constructed and taken office. The bank stand area. Engineering and architectural work and design were completed, awaiting funding and subsequent implementation. This also will be constructed and taken off it. The, the plans are there, the space has been identified, we were just awaiting funding. And the area is just there because you see, if you want to use this facility, there are no toilet facilities around here. And under the progressive united government, ladies and gentlemen, that will be done. As a matter of fact, I have all those plans. The, mini the relative ministries have those plans, copies, but I have copies and I have them in a box, and I still have them. So they are going to be coming out as soon as we take it out. So we have to go and reinvent the wheel. They are there, and they will be implemented. We're ready to go. Aesthetics. Beautification of the district with plants along the Blackburn Highway, Longbush Road, Lower Estate, the various parking lots, Sunday morning well and bandstand areas was initiated and maintained. This will continue on taking office. General clearing and removal of silt and vegetable matter from along the various roads in the district was implemented with the creation of small groups of men, boys and girls along Longbush, Lower Estate, McNamara, Bong Creek, Crab Lot, Fishlock Road, Scatliff Alley, Sugar Mill Road and so on on a quarterly basis. This program will be reinstituted under the Progressive United Government. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I look for social development issues in the district. In 2007, I ensured monthly assistance to seniors for medication. This will continue. I provided daily grants to district students attending university colleges overseas and locally. This, again, will continue. I researched the probability into available and affordable lands for low-income and first-time homeowners in the district. Ladies and gentlemen, this will continue. Economics. This is your capital. Economic plays a big part. The establishment, the establishment of a commercial corridor from Fort Bort, Main Street, Longbush, Lower Estate, and reconnecting to Main Street was envisioned and will be initiated. Some of that money from the pay pack overrun could have been used to offer soft and affordable loans to existing landowners on Main Street in order to assist in the rehabilitation of businesses in keeping with the urban development plan. In keeping with the urban development plan, this corridor and its structures hold the key to valuable historical information, but has gone abandoned and neglected for many, many years. A significant amount of money was paid for this consultancy and this plan, but was never implemented under the present regime. This project will be revisited and developed. Now, let me take you on a visual journey through this corridor that I envision here. We start at Fort Bort. There's a history there with that fort. And as we come up along that corridor, we come to Fort Charlotte. There's history connected with that project. Although oh, Maria has destroyed the structure, but there's history connected with that. We come up to Old Government House. History there again. People's Hospital. Major People. History there again. Adina Donovan Home. And we go up the line. Commercial District. Gerald O'Neill, the Titleys, the Fonsecas, uh -huh. the De Castros, and the list goes on. Then we come up to the Anglican Church, the Methodist Church, the Georges, the Fireproof Building, and we come up all the way to our cemetery here. You know how much of our, what do we call them again? Capital, human capital, very educated, trailblazers and the persons who make sacrifices for us to inherit these beautiful Virgin Islands are lying over there in their resting place. I had initiated a project with the Methodist Church to fix this perimeter wall. Now I see on that side they are doing a beautiful job and I'm hoping that in taking office on February 25th we can re-enter a contract to complete the whole wall. That whole wall is old and is breaking apart so we need to restore it, and we need to pay respect to our days and those who have gone before us. We need to look at the market refurbishing and rehabilitation. Now, from this urban plan, there was a market, a beautiful market, and you all could have seen the billboard there that I posted by the market. I extracted that from this development plan for which we paid over $300,000. All right? However, the Progressive United and taking office will ensure that that proper market will be constructed. Ladies and gentlemen, I also look at the House of Assembly. Now you know that's our House of Assembly, the first House of Assembly, first legislature. It bears the bus of those who blazed the trail before us. Isaac Fonseca, De Castro. Um, I forget the other name. Bruce! Mr. Bruce and Faulkner. Right? They're all there as a historical mementos for others to see. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is my view that this House of Assembly is in the need of a new home. Although I did some refurbishing works and restoration work on the building and saw the beautiful ground to make it look good, I feel that the time has come when it needs a new home. I have envisioned that the land adjacent to the Queen Elizabeth Park can be used for this purpose. And ladies and gentlemen, this old building would now become a museum of sorts. Renovation and refurbishing works to the Elmo Stout High School. This were, these were initiated and completed. However, going forward, we have been provided with an opportunity to design 
a comprehensive reconstruction and development plan, inclusive of all the modern technology, of all the modern technologies and other requisite necessary to prepare our students for the 21st century and beyond. Do you all hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The opportunity now lends itself for that kind of development. I turn my attention now to parking and traffic congestion in the district. Alternative parking to reduce the traffic congestion and stimulate economic activity in the district was envisaged along with the objective to reduce pollution, encourage exercise, enhance social interaction and safety for residents, visitors and tourists. An innovative and creative thought was formulated whereby temporary parking lots will be established on the periphery of the district and to establish a circular transportation network to transport individuals from these parking lots to throughout the city. For example, car owners who work in the district and those entering for business transactions will be encouraged to park their vehicle at a suitable parking lot in, say, Bargos Bay. These individuals will then take the circular network into the city for next connection. This will then be, re then be replicated in a north, south, east, and west. Let me take my time with this one, because I want you all to get this. This will then be replicated in a north, south, east, and west direction. The benefits will include increased economic activity, social interaction, reduced pollution, and increased exercise. So these are the benefits that will be derived from this innovative idea. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make it profoundly clear that I do not support the construction of multi-level parking in the city or anywhere else. These permanent structures are not aesthetically pleasing and they are not part of our ecotourism product and will reduce multi-use of limited space and finally will impose a significant challenge in, re in relation to security, regulation, and maintenance, amongst others. I, <laughs> I envision the idea that government is not very good at maintaining and regulating anything. So to put these kind of structures in the hand of government will really create a mess. And there's a new phenomenon happening in our society now where we have homeless young persons. And you can find that these young persons may take up residence in these facilities. And we cannot have that. So that's one of the many reasons why I don't support these structures. Ladies and gentlemen, Progressive United on February 24th and taking office will fix that. 25th. I'm, a, I'm so excited about this election now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it was these heart, mind, and soul issues, among others, that I offer myself for representative politics for the 4th District. We, the people of the 4th District, must and will demonstrate that we have value, we have worth, we have pride, we have dignity, and a deep belief in our own, in our own somebodiness. As a result, we will and must send a clear and unequivocal message to those who think that on election day, they can continue to use us for self-aggrandizement and enrichment by pushing the envelope and then disappear and abandon the district until the next election cycle. Ladies and gentlemen, resident of Fort District, enough is enough. We shall no longer be taken for granted. My people of the 4th District, this is the most important and very crucial period in our lives. For whatever we do now and decide that this election period will determine which way our lives will go. Let me read it again. Ladies and gentlemen of the 4th District, listen to me carefully. This is the most important and very crucial period in our lives. For whatever we do now and decide that this election period will determine which way our lives shall go. Do you hear me? The man with a vision and on a mission is back. The vision and the mission continues. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, on election day, both Dr. Scatliff and the entire Progressive United team and the at-large Back into office. Oh, yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for listening and have a pleasant night. Thank you. My school is still still going, but things were getting better. Not enough jobs, it's getting so hard to see the bigger picture. A lot of people worry, it's such a sad story. If Julie and Fraser and P.U. get in, they make a story. We need a change in here. Just see the Virgin Islands. Only one good thing I can think That's about. That's the perception. Right here. Some of them too.